Watercolor Mixing Basics Plus. Go grab your cup of tea and join me in this fun class where we're going to make the most of your paints. I'll show you how to create a simple color chart. And using a limited palette, we'll get a variety of colors. You're going to make colors that you never knew existed. Explore how your colors are working together on the paper and go from bold to very light. And in the end, I've got some special extras for you. Watercolor doodling. You're going to have fun with all that leftover paint. Hi, I'm Christina Watts. Join me for some watercolor mixing and make the most of your paint. Hello, welcome to color mixing class. So for today's class, you're going to need the following. A couple yellows, a couple reds, a couple blues. Uh, there's a phthalo green. There's a little bit of titanium white over there. And in my other palette, I have a burnt sienna. This is a really great basic palette setup. So we have some cool colors. Those are the ones on the bottom, typically brighter. And the warm colors are on top. That's a super bright green. You can't tell because it's dry and looks black right now. And then I have a titanium white, which um, I always find is interesting. I mean, you can't see this, but you will. There's a burnt sienna again off in my other palette. So the other things that you will need for color mixing is, of course, your water and a plate or palette to mix your colors on. I've got a little brush. Um, you'll also want to get like a black, hopefully a waterproof marker. And um, that can be a fine point. And then also grab yourself a ruler so you can draw some charts. Now, because I have um, eight colors plus a burnt sienna, so that's nine colors, I'm going to make sure that my chart is at least nine by nine. Um, and this is going to end up looking a lot like a multiplication table to a degree. So you can go ahead and measure this out and be perfect if you want. I find, though, with the color charting, you might as well just eyeball it and um, put the lines in as best you can because this is just really for your information. Uh, the other thing is, is I tend to, when I get charting, mess up every once in a while. So these can certainly get messy and they can even be confusing. So just do your best with this. And again, don't be perfect. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this film so that you don't have to watch me drawing these lines in real time. Now that we have our charts ready to go, I'm going to show you how I start mixing my colors across them. Um, this one here, this yellow, really bright, cool color, it's Bismouth Yellow, and it's really bright. Uh, Hansi Yellow Light is also another really great one, and um, Lemon Yellow. So I'm just putting some water and taking some of the pigment off my dry watercolor paint here and scooping some more water out. And this is how you would typically make like a puddle of watercolor. You'll see me start to cheat as we go on here um, and just take right from my pans because I've got a lot of water in them. So I start at my top and I'm going to put one brick of yellow here and then I'm going to take some more yellow and run it down the side as well. I just want to make sure that I've got a consistency of at least like a, a blend of at least about, you know, 2% milk I would say as far as water to pigment go I mean you have different levels of watercolor um, the more watered down it is the thinner the paint color will be and the more pigment in your water or more paint that you add to your water the thicker it will get and it will get to be like a consistency like creamer this next color that I'm adding in here is new gamboge it's a nice warm yellow very powerful yellow and see I just cheated already so right into that little puck there and I'm adding it onto my watercolor paper. 
So this watercolor paper is 140 pound cold press paper and it's Fabriano student grade. You can use the 90 pound too. Um, color chart mixing is fine with the thinner sheets of watercolor paper. Next color I'm using is Opera Pink. It is probably the brightest pink in the Daniel Smith line and it's really great to mix other colors with. Uh, this being said, um, it is a fugitive color and that means that it's not as light fast as your other ones. So light fast meaning the ability to stay true color and not fade over time. This one here is my Pyrrole Red and it is a very rich, dark, deep red, um, very pigment loaded. And I'm running that on. And this one is Cerulean Blue. It is kind of like a light blue. And I should have actually maybe picked like a darker, another darker blue, like a Prussian blue for in beside it. But I had Ver, Verditter, Verditter blue. That one's always a tough one to pronounce um, for my next blue. Uh, this blue here, the Verditter blue, is just a really true blue sky blue. Um, cobalt blue is another really great one. Uh, these blues in particular are great for mixing greens, so they're just a nice clean blue. Just add it there, and as you can see my blues are very close to the same uh, hue, but they are different. Um, out comes my phthalo green, this one's phthalo green yellow shade, they make it in Blue, sh blue shade as well, phthalo green blue shade. It's super bright, awesome for things like northern lights, um, botanicals, and uh, so on. Also, the bright greens, the brightest greens are really the ones that are hard to get to for a mix, so having those in your palette's good because you can always dull them down. Um, this is that burnt sienna that's coming out. It's on my larger palette and it is um, like a really red brown. Okay, we have all of our colors that we're going to mix together. We're going to make some super awesome new colors with just these ones that we have in our palette and see what we can come up with. Um, I'm going to block out some of these um, squares simply because we don't need to be mixing the same red together. See if you come across the top. What we're interested in is, you know, what this yellow is going to look like with the pinks and, and other colors. So I'm just going to draw a line through these diagonals here because we will not obviously mix these colors together, they're the same color. Now all this uh, being said, with not putting those colors here, these are also great opportunities for you to mix that color with the titanium white and see what they look like with just that. Okay, let's begin mixing our colors. So the first one I'm going to mix is um, my brightest yellow, my Bismuth yellow. And I've got my little puddle going over here might make a little bit more of this one because I'm going to come along the top rope first. Sometimes I jump around on my chart depending on, you know, if I have that color on my brush already and um, it's kind of just lazy person's way to cheat through a chart. But I'm going to walk you guys through this one going straight along the top first and foremost. So I'm taking that Bismuth Yellow and now the New Gamboge, just a little dab of that over here. And I'll start kind of make little smaller puddles as we go. Um, We'll see what I can get away with with this big puddle of uh, Bismuth bright yellow there. So I'm just stealing a little bit of that bright yellow, mixing it with my new Gamboge and coming to a in-between yellow as best I can. So like a 50-50 mix. Now I'll show you in a different clip how I would even push this color a little bit further when I'm mixing my colors and get to um, a tertiary color. So this would kind of be like a secondary color in between these, these guys here in a 50-50 mix. Then I'm going to jump to my Opera Pink and I'm going to put a little dab over here. Try to keep rotating my palette so you can watch this mix happen. And uh, once I have that ready, I'm going to dip it into the yellow. And these two colors, like I know from mixing a lot of color, that it's going to make like a nice peach color. Um, the pinks and the yellows are really great for sort of skin tones and even getting into like the purples and the blues. And depending on how much water you add to that mix can really sort of lighten it. So this is a great tip right here. Oh, and if you do this and you touch your paints together and um, the yellow starts dragging over, just take your paper towel and blot it right off to just dry it and then continue making your um, color swatch. 
I think I'm going to have to get some more mixed up here so that it's uh, more consistent on my paper now. And you're going to see a thicker mix of this, so that kind of pale peach color that I put down earlier is a little bit thicker with pigment, so it looks like that. Um, watercolor is dry, 25% lighter, so what you do see right now going down is going to change. Then I've got my pyrrole red here, and that's a really thick color. And I mix that one in with my bismuth yellow. Okay, just try to turn this palette for you. And I had added some yellow to it, so it's kind of just a little slight difference on that. So you'll start to notice too, like which pigments of yours are more powerful than the other ones, and um, how do they mix well with each other. Some don't at all, and it can vary brand to brand. So I'm going to carry through. Next, obviously, I would be putting down my bismuth yellow with my cerulean blue. That one makes a really nice green, and then we'll carry forward to my verditter blue, and I'll mix with my phthalo green, and then finally my burnt sienna. So I am going to fast forward this so you can see how I complete this chart, and I'll shift down to the next yellow, and I start on sort of the other side too. Okay, my palette's getting pretty messy, so at this point I'm just going to clean it off if your palette's pretty messy. Um, I won't, I'll try not to clean it off later because I have a special sort of way that I take care of my excess or my extra paints. Um, I'm, now as you see, I'm carrying down in the new gamboge area and I'm shifting over and just sort of doing that upper level. Um, some people, what they do is the 50-50 mix of uh, colors goes on top, and then down below what they do is they start sort of adding more water so you get lighter washes of these mixes um, down below that diagonal line that I've placed in there. Okay, here's a color that really excites me, and it's the phthalo green with the new gamboge. So this gets you to like a nice spring green, and there is that color out in their collection. And I wonder if it is that. So yeah, major tip there. Check out that green. Now when it comes to mixing the purples and getting into like the grayer mixes, um, I really, really love, you know, like a bright pink or red with my blues because you just get some really dynamic colors. And uh, if you're at all with your colors trying to mix purple with your reds and your blues and you're getting mud, it's a very good indicator that your paints aren't uh, of a good quality. So, you know, if you can't mix purple, that should tell you right there. Um, right here we have... A pink getting into a green and of course that's going to make a gray or a brown because these are complementary colors so they really uh, neutralize when they come together. Yeah, I really like this blue mixed with the red there because that's going to give you a really great um, shade for doing mountains like the cliffs on the mountains so you'll see that uh, definitely these colors you can start seeing them in the real world. i to clean up my palette again and Go for some more colors.
Right, we've worked our way down all through our colors. Um, of course, in different quantities of these mixes, you could come up with even different colors. And so you can see how many colors we got out of just those ones that we had. Now I'm adding white to an existing mix up here and I'm bringing that peach color down a little bit more. So having a titanium white is really great if you're doing skin tones and you could actually go through this entire diagonal and um, just check all your colors that way. In this next bit, I'm going to show you how water really impacts your watercolors and changes their color. So I'll start, um, I've got a couple that I've done previously, but I'm going to show you with Pyro Red because it's a fairly bold color, um, how to do this. So I've got my puddle and I'm just going to put a block on here. I want it fairly thick for this. So if I think that it's not that thick, I will add some more pigment. Um, but now I have water only on my brush and I'm sort of lifting my paper and grabbing that bead and allowing my color to sink into the water and that's going to give me a different gradient of color so it's just sort of a fun way to easily see how your color will look more watered down. Now I'm just going to do blocks. So for the first block I'm going to get like a really thick mix so this would be the consistency of creamer if you were thinking uh, you know how it was looking and then I'm gonna add some water get some pigment first here and my water's looking pretty dirty up there so I'm just gonna swap that out with some clean water because we are mixing and it's good to uh, keep them somewhat clean okay so I had creamer um, consistency and now I'm going for homo milk 2% milk right here a little more water, I got 1% milk, and now I'm going for skim milk, see? And now you have a variety of tones in the one color, using just one color, so water really impacts um, what your colors are going to look like. And we're going to do something fun here, so we've been seeing a lot of the hearts around town, which is a super cool in initiative. Um, instead of doing a circle for my blend that's going to blow out right on paper, I'm going to do a heart. So I'm taking my waterproof fine tip black pen here, drawing my little heart shape out. And then what I'm going to do is I want just my three colors to mix. So I'm going to choose a yellow, a red, and a blue. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm just putting water in my paper. So this is a wet and wet technique. And the water's going down inside my heart. And I want it to be like, you know, I don't want it dry. So I'm just making sure the paper is nicely wet. But I don't want a lake either. So just make sure it's nice and glossy. I'm going to go with my nice warm New Gamboge. And as you can see, all you have to do is tap it on your paper and the water will move your paint around. I'm going to jump to my Pyro Red. And it's sort of starting to dry out on that side, so I may help it with my brush here. And I'm going to get this Verditter Blue. This one really explodes on paper, so you see how you just had to help it a little bit and it just goes right into those other colors. So this is a really great way to figure out, you know, how are your paints going to behave on paper. And it can vary. Different papers do are different for sure. Um, but also how they will mix and blend with the colors that you're using. So. Just pick your paper up and um, hold it on an angle for a second and just sort of see how it blends together.
previously left them. You see in the blue section there, there's a pretty heavy blob of thick blue. Um, that's because I was, you know, cheating and stuffing my brush right into these things and not making puddles and allowing my pigments to disperse in the water. Um, some people absolutely hate that. Um, it, and of course it can wreck your painting, so watch out for that. So if you're really working on something special, make sure you make a puddle first and that your pigments mixed well in the water. Uh, you'll note that what I've done here is I've put my new gamboge, my pyrrole red, and my blue and dots around my heart. So now what I'm going to do is, those are my primary colors. And I'm going to mix some secondary colors, and that will be the blends in between these ones. So for this one here, I've got new gamboge, and I've got the pyrrole red. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tertiary color in between that dot. And on one side it will make that, so you take that 50-50 blend and you add, say, more of the yellow. And you get a yellowy peach color. Um, and then you will add some more red and bring it over to the red side. And so you get like a richer color. And I will do this for all of those areas that um, need the secondary and the tertiary colors just to kind of get a broader range out of those three. We've done lots of charting and playing with some colors, but now we have all these colors on our palette. And um, one of the things that I like to do with my leftover colors is instead of uh, wiping them off and um, setting them down the drain or garbage, I'll take an extra piece of paper and I'll just make blobs. And here's the secret to like blobs and blob watercolor doodling is you want to just make sure that it's in like three places and then make your blob sort of organic. Don't touch them. So the, basically the paint will go on the water where you put it. And um, if you don't touch those colors together, they won't drift in together. Although sometimes, you know, you might want to, although we're getting pretty um, muddy in our mixes here. So just tap in a few fun colors if you got them. I'm just gonna create a whole bunch of blobs with as much of this paint as I can. And uh, then I'm gonna let it dry. And when I come back, I'm going to show you different ways to go about making doodles on these beautiful blobs. Hey, um, seeing how I'm picking up my pen now, I'm just going to quickly review what we've um, learned today. And that is sort of charting with primary colors. And um, of course, your yellow, your red, and your blue are your primaries. And then, you know, the mixes in between those. Uh, the 50 50 mix is typically called a secondary color. And then the colors that you get off of the either ends of that one are the tertiary colors. And here's our watered down palette. This is all dry. Look how that changed, right? So as soon as it dry, it changed. So this is your color with H2O. And now for our lovely little blobs. So um, I'm going to show you some examples. So this is an example of uh, doodling inside your color blobs. And then um, this is an example that I've begun of doodling in the whites between your blobs. And on this one here, I'm going to show you how you can connect them and, you know, just basically draw lines of connection and doodle in both the white and the blobs. And it's pretty fun. Um, the thing with uh, doodling over watercolors is like if you've ever done any zentangling or something, it's very much pattern work. So you always want to have consistent patterns, um, you know, 
break them up here and there and uh, just have a lot of fun with this because this you know was maybe paint you were going to throw out and now you have a fun doodle or uh, you know make these blobs into fish or birds or different animals. I hope in this course you've learned a lot about uh, mixing your colors and how to have fun with your blobs and make your paint uh, that you're going to toss out useful and enjoy your doodling. Um, again, you know, here's those examples where I've done botanicals inside of the blobs and then um, in the white shades again. So thanks for watching and you guys have an artful day.